that uh, Dr. Rahula puts all the questions that he has noted down so that uh, in the course of the discussion we can cover most of the ground. Right. Uh, and uh, I've also got one or two things to say. I would like also to put it so that the discussion can tend around the questions. Yes. Uh, why not put your question first? Yes. My question is, you know, in Mahayana philosophy... You explain what Mahayana is. In the Buddhist philosophy, as uh, coming from Nagarjuna, who was the, probably the greatest thinker, first century, second, second century, he talked a great deal about Shunyata. Yes. Void. Yes. And this has a very close association with insight. Yes. And the whole of, uh, I believe the whole of later Buddhist thought owes its strength to uh, this uh, Nagarjuna. Nagarjuna's uh, idea of Shunyata as being something which is uh, pure or pristine. And there is no insight without Shunyata. I'll put it that way. Yeah. And then he also said that without understanding the outer, there's no possibility of going to inner. Then he also made a statement which seems to be fallacious. Samsara is nirvana and nirvana is yeah. samsara. And nirvana is yes. Yes. Yeah. Sir, you are using sensor words, perhaps we, some of us may understand you, you have to explain it very Samsara carefully. Samsara is worldly life with all its travail, suffering and uh, dukkha, with all its sorrow. sorrow, Samsara. Nirvana is a state of freedom, bliss, liberation. He said Samsara is Nirvana and Nirvana is Samsara and this is explained by the Buddhist scholars through Pratyutta Samutpada. The whole thing is interrelated, conditioned origination. So the, it, it, this is a very powerful influence over the Buddhist thought today, as I understand it. And I would like this to be examined in the context of what we have been talking about. What is the... I haven't understood the statement. The, uh, the, the first thing is yes. the, the importance of Shunyata. Shunyata. Yes, I will, no, I will explain. I'm, because what do you mean by that word Shunyata? Yes. Uh, may I explain? From the Buddhist point of view, I will explain. Uh, that is what. Uh, you see, uh, Shunyata is literally, it means voidness. Empty. Void. Void. Empty. Empty. Shunyata. Nothingness. Shunyata. Nothingness. Nothingness. Yes. I know the meaning of meaning. That is a literal, literal meaning. But the significance it, it is attributed by Western Buddhist scholars mostly to Nagarjuna. That is incorrect. It, it, it is the Buddha who said this first. Yes. And Nagarjuna, as a great thinker, philosopher, developed it into a system. Yes. Whereas Buddha said in very simple way. Yes. And uh, Ananda, who was Buddha's nearest associate, companion, disciple, asked one day, Sir, it is said the world is Sunya, world is Sunya, empty. What does it mean? To what extent it is Sunya, empty? He said, Ananda, it is without self, he used the word Atta, Atman, it is without self and anything pertaining to self, therefore it is Sunya. It is very clearly explained. In many other places he told uh, a man, see the world as Sunya and you are liberated. And these are the original statements. Nagarjuna took these ideas and developed by his Madhyami Karika based on Pratit Samutpad, that is dependent origination, yes. or I would rather call it the conditioned genesis. Yes. And uh, on that philosophy, that is, everything is interdependent, relative, nothing is absolute, everything is cause and effect, and cause cannot be separated from the result, 
effect, effect on Bishop, it is a continuity, and that is time also. Yes. And uh, uh, on this philosophy, Nagarjuna developed very highly as a system this teaching of sunyata as void, empty. And uh, that is exactly what Krishnaji says also. There is no self, and you see it, and every problem is solved. There is, there is no compli complication, there is no problem. That is how I see it in relation to his explanation. Then the second thing you said, what was the second question? The Sunita. relationship ah, between the outer and the ex yes. inner. That is exactly what uh, Krishnaji and uh, uh, Dr. Bohm discussed as actuality and truth, or reality and truth, and it is published in that new book, and uh, that is Sangriti Satya and Paramartha Satya. This is also ex accepted Buddhist uh, philosophical position. Uh, Sangriti Satya is conventional truth, that is what we do, talk and eat and all these things. It's Sangriti Satya within duality, uh, within relativity, that one. That you can't say this is false, this table. But in a certain, in another sense, this is not so. But uh, uh, Sangriti Satya is that conventional truth. Paramartha Satya is the ultimate absolute truth. These two also cannot be separated. Yes, but uh, uh, Nagarjuna clearly says in one place in Madhimikarika, one who cannot see and does not see the conventional truth is incapable of arriving at the ultimate. He says, the third position you took, uh, the question you raised was, uh, I think, Nirvana and Sansara. That is also Nagarjuna says in the Madhimi Karika. He says, clearly I remember the verse even by heart, it, he says that there is, Nirvana has no difference whatsoever from Sansara, and Sansara has no difference whatsoever from Nirvana. To clarify the word sansara, in the strict definition, sansara means the continuity of our existence. And uh, uh, I remember once I put this question to Krishna Ji in Paris. Personally, there was nobody except him and myself. Two wise people. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I would say, Krishna Ji, there is a Nagarjuna statement like this. Uh, this is very interesting to say it today. Uh, I asked him what he thought. Then to my surprise he said, who is Nagarjuna? I said, that is your compatriot. Oh, he said, no, 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 because he was from Andhra, supposed to be from oh, Andhra. Oh, oh. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, uh, then I explained to him who Nagarjuna was, historically, and as a thinker and a philosopher. I said, that in Buddhist history, perhaps he is the boldest thinker, undoubtedly, Nagarjuna. Then he asked me another question, then what were his attainments? I said, that we can't say, that we don't know. Only we know his writings, through writings about him, but about his attainments, spiritual realization, we can't say anything. Then Krishna ji paused for a minute and asked me, what did Buddha say about all this? I said, nothing. That is correct. He then you said, with the finger like this, I remember very well, uh, that Swaray's uh, house, Swaray, Swaray. Swaray's house, uh, that is right. Because I was always doubtful and I did not accept Nagarjuna's statement uh, so clearly, definitely saying Nirvana and Sansara are the same. Sir, let's. I'm not quite sure that we understand all of us. Yes. Will you explain this position? No. May I ask this to explain a little more? Yes. <coughs> what does samskara mean actually? Sansara. Sansara. Uh, samskara uh, in Sanskrit. Uh, sansara. It is, uh, Sanskrit, Pali, both. Pali, sansara. Both, yes, samskara. samskara is another thing. Is? Is another thing. Sanskara. sanskara is a this is sansara, S A M S A R A. Ah, sankara. Sansara. Sansara. Sansara literally means 
wandering, going on, going on. That and samskara it. means? Uh, samskara means uh, uh, construction. Uh, that, that, that is all our thinking process. The past. It belongs to the past. That's right. Belongs to the past. That's, that's what, yes, I understood that. Yes, that, is, that belongs to the past. past that's right. All our samskaras are work for the memory, knowledge, yes, that's right. learning and all that. Yes. Like an old man going back and living in the past. That's, that's it. it. Samskara. But samsara is continuity. 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 Uh, nirvana we is can't define. No, non whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever no. it is, uh, it is never defined in positive terms by the Buddha. Always he Whenever he was asked, he said, no, 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 that is not true. Right. Yes. So you have asked your questions? Yes. yes. Now, sir, better ask your questions too in relation to what he is. Ah, yes. I, no, that is not, uh, the question is uh, not from him, from you. My question I am asking from you. What? <laughs> yes, there, there are many questions, but uh, as we have not much time, Oh, we've got plenty of time. Uh, yes. One question is, you know, both I will say at once, so you can take them. Uh, one question is that in the Western philosophy, Western thought, free will has played a very important place. Free will? Free will, absolute free will. Free will? Uh, yes, free will. will. Yes, yes, yes. According to the same philosophy that Mr. Narayan said that uh, uh, relate, uh, conditional relations, that is cause and effect, pratit samutpada. Yeah. According to that philosophy, Buddhism, such a thing is impossible because all our thinking, all our construction, all our work, all our knowledge is conditioned. Yeah. Yes. Therefore, if there is a free will, it is free only in a relative sense. And, uh, uh, conven- relative sense. It is not absolute free. That is the Buddhist point. That is one question I put. Let, let's talk it over, sir. Yes. Very, very briefly, if you take say it. What is will? What is will? What, how, do you, how do you explain what will is? Uh, will is that you decide, you no, want. Uh, no, what is the origin, the beginning of will? I will do this, I won't do that. Now, what is the meaning of will? Meaning of will is to, to want to do. No, no. All right, let me go on then. Is it not desire? Sure. It is a desire. Desire accentuated, heightened, yes. strengthened, yes. which we call will. Right? Yes. yes. Maybe we, also huh? may, we may have determined, we determine the uh, object of desire. We say, I'm determined. In that there is determination in truth. Right? Yeah. I desire that, yeah. and to achieve that I exercise, I make an effort. That effort, the motive of that effort is desire. Yes, certainly. certainly. So, will is desire, right? Uh, it's certainly, it is, a, it is a form of desire. Huh? It is a form of desire. It is a form of desire. desire yes. Now, can desire ever be free? Absolutely. I am, uh, that is what I wanted to hear from you. Not no, I, because uh, uh, you don't like to say that, but I want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, desire can never, it can change the objects of desire. I can desire one year uh, to go to buy this, the next year that, change, yes. but desire is constant. The objects vary. Yes. And <coughs> the strengthening of desire, I will do that. Yes. The will is, is in operation. 
will is desire. Yes. Now, can desire ever be free? No. But we say free will exists, because I can choose between this and that, yes. between this job and that job. I can go, except out of totalitarian states, I can go from England to France freely. Yes. So the idea of free will is cultivated uh, with, with a sense that human beings are free to choose. What does that mean, to choose? I can choose between blue jeans and something else, between this car and that car, between that house and so on. But why should I choose at all, apart from material things, apart from certain books and so on? That's why, why, why is there choice? I am a Catholic, I give up Catholic, Catholicism, become a Zen Buddhist. If I am a Zen, I become something else, and I choose. Why? Why is there choice at all? Which gives me the, gives one the impression that I am free to choose. Right, sir? So I am asking, why, why is there the necessity of choice at all? If I am a Catholic and saw the whole significance of Catholicism, with its abstractions, with its rituals, dogmas, and you know, the whole circus round in it, and I abandon that, why should I join something else? Because when I have investigated this, I have investigated all the religions. I want. So choice must exist only when the mind is confused. No? When it's clear, there's no choice. What? What? Is that right? Right. I think uh, you have answered the question. To me, you have answered the question. I, I haven't fully answered well, it. They, I think that the Western philosophers might not agree with you, I'm not sure, but uh, they, they won't agree, of course. They not. say that no. choice is not desire. Will is not desire, but the will is something else. I think that's my impression. Yes, yeah, will is something else. Yes, but it's will uh, is, I don't know, free act. Free, the will is a something act. inherited or is part of the genetic process to will, to be, to be. But I think, for example, I, mean, I can't say I know much about it, but the Catholic philosophers may say that when Adam sinned, he willed wrongly. He, 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 he made a wrong choice, uh -huh. and he set us off. You see, <laughs> but that's a very convenient way of explaining away everything. First, he invented Adam and Eve, the okay. serpent and the apple, yeah. and God, and then put everything as yeah. the primal cry. Yes, that is, I think, a lot, lot of creation there. Huh? Lot of creation there, and, and mental creation. I think if one observes, one can see that will is the result of desire, but I think people have the impression that will is something entirely different. I mean, it's, yes. That it's, uh, will is part of something sacred. Yes. That's what people, many yes. people think. Something derived from <coughs> a divine being. According to Western view. Uh, more or less, I mean, yes. if I'm not, I'm, I don't know very much Western philosophy, but yes. what I've, peop, with, people with whom I've talked, and they may not be sufficiently informed, but 
And they have given me the impression that will is something not quite human, not quite uh, yes. desire, yes. not quite something that you cultivate. It is born out of the original sin, yes. original uh, God, and so on, yes. so on, so on. But if one puts all that aside, yes. which are all really theori theoretical, problematical, and rather superstitious, if you put all that aside, then what is will and what is choice, and what is action without choice and will? You yes. That is the problem. Is there any action which is not compounded with will. Yes. I don't know what the Buddha's and... Hmm? Would you say that insight, insight yes. is uh, not a result of will? Oh, nothing whatever to do with it. No, no, nothing to do with it. All is all memory. Yes, yes. So insight is uh, uh, something which is free from will and also analysis. Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the insight is seeing. Seeing, yes. Seeing. Yes. And see, uh, see, in see. that seeing there is no choice, there is no discrimination, there is no judgment, there is no moral or immoral values, value judgment. You see. So, insight is not a result of will, nor is it a result of analysis. No, no, no. Yes. No. no but, but you see, this has become theoretical. You are making it so, so theoretical. Because through analysis. You are making it, sir, excuse me, sir. You are making it theoretical. You have, st you have defined it. It's not this, it's not that, it's not that, and you think you have insight, no, have you? No, I don't then why, why are you discussing? No, because we have been discussing insight so far. No. We are well, we have been no, see. Now, Narayan, if I may point out, we are, dis we are talking over together action in which there is no choice, in which there is no effort as well. Is there such action? I don't know, sir. Please. There is. There is such an action. Huh? There is such an action. You know it? Or is it a theory? Forgive uh, me. I must be. Uh, <laughs> you see, you I want. Say, I, forgive I, me, sir. I want to move away, if you will forgive me. And I'm not being imprudent. I want, one should move away from theories. Yes. From ideas, from conclusions. But find out for oneself the truth of that matter. Which is, is there an action in which there is no effort of will at all, and therefore no choice? So, what is correct action? in which there is no will, no choice, no desire, because the will is part of desire and so To find that out, one must be very clear, mustn't one, the nature of desire. And desire is part of sensation. And desire being part of sensation, and thought identifies itself with that sensation. And I, through identification, the I is built up, the ego, and the ego then says, I must or I will not. So we are 
trying to find out if there is an action not based on the principle of ideals, right, on desire, on will, not spontaneous. I don't. That word is rather a dangerous word because sp- nobody is spontaneous. I, one thinks one can be spontaneous, but there is no because one must be totally free to be spontaneous. You follow? So what is, is there such action? Because I, most of our action has a motive. Right? And motive means movement. I, I, have, I want to build a house. I want that woman or that man. I want. I am hurt psychologically or um, biologically, and my motive is either to hurt back. So there is always some kind of motive in action, which we know daily life. So then, action is conditioned by the motive. The motive is part of the identification process. So if I understand, not understand, if there is a perception of the truth that identification builds the whole nature and structure of the self, then is there an action which doesn't spring from thought? I don't have my, am I right, sir? Could we ask why, before we go into that, why there is identification? You see, why is it that this is so prevalent? Uh, why does the why does thought identify it? with sensation and other with things? Sense, with, why does thought? Uh, why is there identification with something? Especially sensation. Yes, sensation. Answer. Answer, sir. I don't know, you, you're all experts. Is it the very nature of thought to identify? Or, you, or, or are there forms of thought which don't identify with sensation? Now, I, why do you, oh, if I may, again, most politely and respectfully, etc., etc., etc. Why do you put that question? Is it a theoretical question or actual question? Because why do you, nor I, identify? Let me put it this way. The Go, no, I, I, I won't <laughs> put it differently. The why only thing I can identify with is sensation. I can't have nothing else to identify with. So why why does why do you give importance or uh, to sensation? Do you say I only I am a sensate being and nothing else? No. Ah, that's it. No, I. If I have to identify with anything, it can only be with sensation. So is there a duality in identification? Of course. Could we make it clear? In identification, as you point out, sir. There is duality, the me, the identifier, and, what kind of and the identified. Is it possible that you are trying to overcome the duality by identifying? <coughs> yes. Saying, I am not different, except when you are, right? or when you feel you are. You see, I would say, I don't want to enter into the field of ideologies, theories. To me, that's, I have no interest in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I really, in investigating, I want to find out. Perhaps I've found out. But talking over it together, is there an action in which the self is wrong? In daily life, not in Nirvana, when I've reached perf- 
freedom and then and all the rest of it. I want to do it in this life, in as I live. Which means I have to find out, mind has to find out an action which has no cause, which means no motive, an action which is not the result or the effect of a series of causes and effects. In if that exists, action is within always bound, chained. I don't know. Am I making myself clear? Yes. Go on. So is there such an action? Well, it seems to me we can't find it as long as we are identifying. Uh, yes, why with this? Uh, so that's why I said as long as identification exists, I can't find the answer. And why, why does thought identify that? Why does thought identify with sensations? Is that irresistible? Or, huh? Is that irresistible? Or that I, I don't know if, it's, if it is irresistible or if it's part. If it's part of sensation. How is that? Let's investigate. I, mean, I don't like. You to think that sensation is behind that? Perhaps. When I, when I say perhaps, it's, that word is used for the purpose of investigation, not I don't know, but let's yeah, right. but it may be. So why has sensations why have sensations become so important in life? Sexual sensations, the sensation of power whether occult power or political power, economic power, power of woman or a man or a man or a woman, hmm? power of environment, the, the influence of environment, the pressure. Why? Why has thought yielded to this pressure? Right, sir? Yes, and does sensation necessarily produce a pressure? It does when it's identified. Yeah, then that's the two together. I know, but I'm, I won't. Let's examine a little yeah. more. So what do we mean by sensation? Well, well we, we have either the sense of the senses, or it seems to me we may have a remem remembered sensation of pleasure. Senses. The operation of the senses, yes. touching, tasting, touching. seeing, yes. smelling, hearing. The experience hearing. that happens then. Right? Right. And uh, also the memory of it. No. The memory is only when there is an identification with it. I agree. When there is no identification, <coughs> senses have no... Uh, senses are senses. But why does thought identify itself with senses? I don't, yes, that's not clear. Huh? It's not yet clear. I know, we're going to make it clear. Are, going you to saying that when, <laughs> are you saying that when the thing is remembered, when the sensation is remembered, then we have identification? Yes. Hmm. Can we make that more clear? Well, let's make it more clear. Let's work at it. I, there is a perceiving a pleasurable lake. I said, seeing a beautiful lake. What takes place in that scene? There is not only optical nerve seeing by the eye, but also my sense, my. That the senses are awakened, the smell of the water, the trees from the lake. Could we stop a moment? I mean, when you say seeing, uh, of course, the, you see through the visual sense. I'm using purely visual sense. Yes. Now, 
Therefore, you already have the sense, the visual sense of awake and merely to see. Is that what you mean? Yes. I'm just seeing. And that visually? Visually, optically, I'm just seeing. Then what takes place? That then the other I'm, senses start to operate. And the other senses start to operate. Why doesn't it stop there? What is the next step? Then? The next step is thought comes in. Hmm? How beautiful that is. I wish I could remain here. So thought identifies it. Huh? Yeah. It says it's this. Huh? Yeah. Because in that there's pleasure. In what? Seeing yeah. and the delight of seeing, then thought coming into operation and say, I must have more. I must I build a house here. It's why, mine. Why does thought do that? Why does thought interfere with senses? Is that it? Now wait, sir. The moment the senses take pleasure, hmm, say how delightful, and stops there, thought doesn't enter. Right? Now why does thought enter? If it is painful, thought avoids it. Right. Hmm? It doesn't identify itself with that. But it identifies against it. It says, I don't want it. No, I, I mean, leave it alone, leave move it away from it. it. Yeah. Either deny it or move away from it. But if it is pleasurable, then when the senses begin to enjoy it, see how nice. Then thought begins to identify itself with it. So why? Why? Because pleasure. But why doesn't uh, thought give it up when it sees how futile this is? Oh, that's much later. That's long when long it long becomes long. painful. Yes. When it's aware, identification breeds both pleasure and fear. Mm -hmm. Then say, but <laughs> then it begins to question. What I was saying, thought has made a, a simple mistake in the beginning, a, a kind yes. of innocent yes. mistake, right? Yes, that's right. Thought has made a mistake uh -huh. in identifying with something that gives it, that brings to it pleasure, or there is pleasure in something. And thought tries to take hold of it. Take over. To make it permanent, perhaps. Huh? To perhaps to make it permanent. Permanent, that's right, sir. Which means memory. A remembrance of the lake with the daffodils and the trees and the water and sunlight and all the rest. Now, I understand how the thought has made a mistake and later it discovers this mistake, but it seems to be too late because it doesn't Because it's now, con it's now conditioned. Yes, it's already yes, yes, yes. so, so strong. Me, make it clear why it cannot give it up, you see. How why it cannot give it up? That's a whole problem. Yeah, well, I mean, we try to make it more clear. Why, why doesn't thought give up something which, which it knows or is aware that it is painful. Yes. It is destructive. Why? Go on and why, sir? So I, so let's make a simple example. Psychologically, one is hurt. Yeah, well, that's later. No, I'm taking that as yeah. an example. Later, it doesn't matter. Later, on. one is hurt. Why can't one immediately give up that hurt? Because knowing that hurt is going to create great deal of damage. That is, when I'm hurt, I build a wall around myself, not to be hurt more. There is fear. And isolation, neurotic actions, all that form. Why hurt is the image, thought has created the image about myself, and that image gets hurt. Why doesn't thought say, yes, but I've seen this, drop it immediately? Right? Yeah. It's the same question. Yes. Because when it drops the image, it's nothing left. 
Yes, well, then you have another ingredient because you say thought wants to hold on to the memory of the image, right? Uh, hold on to the memories which have created the, the image. image. and which may create it again. Yeah. And thought feels they are very precious. Yes, they're very precious, uh, nostalgic, and all yeah. the rest of it. Yes, yeah, so somehow it gives very high value to all that. Yes. Well, how did it come to do that? Why has it made uh, the image so valuable? Yeah. Why has the image become so important, which thought has created? You see, if I may say, in the beginning it was a simple mistake, and thought made an image of pleasure. And it seemed that it became very important, precious. Yes. And was unable to give it up. Yes. Why doesn't it? So if I give up pleasure, hmm, if thought gives up pleasure, what is, the, what is there left? If it can't seem to return to the state in the beginning, you see, when there was nothing. Ah, that's, that is the, the pristine state. That yeah, is it the is state. unable to return to that state. can't, because thought has, you know, all the rest of it. Yes. Well, I think that what happens is that when thought thinks of giving up pleasure, which has become very precious, then the mere thought of that is painful. Yes, because giving up is painful. And therefore a thought runs away from that. Yes, so it clings to pleasure. Yeah. It will not, does not wish to face the pain. Till, yeah. till there's a better reward for pleasure. Well, then that's With no a regret of pleasure. That's no change. Is no, but of course. <laughs> that, that thought seems to have fallen into a trap because, which it has made, because it has innocently uh, remembered pleasure and then gradually made it important. Well, of course. And then it has become too painful to give it up. To give it up because any change from immediate from the removal of pleasure is very painful. Because if there's nothing else then of there's frightened. Yeah. Well then at once but you see it, it is in the beginning it was not frightened to have nothing else. Yes. Now it is. Yes. Uh, in the beginning that means beginning being the beginning of man. Yeah. In the beginning of man, I, in, can we question even that? Perhaps not, but I mean... A beginning of the age, the... Hmm? If you go far enough back. But I <laughs> want to say, it's been going a long time, but thought has built this trap, which has gradually got worse. Sir, so could we say, as the brain is very old, hmm? all our brains are very old, Merely tracing it back further and further and further and further and further has no, you can't yeah, find, well, ever find out. Yeah, so but I can say, but my brain is now as it is, mm -hmm. which is very old, conditioned in terms of pressure and pain. Yes. They say that the old brain is also the emotional part of the brain. Of course, emotional or all the rest of it. Yeah. Sensory. So my. So where are we now? Well, we say that this brain has conditioned itself by continual image, remembering the image of pleasure with the unpleasantness of giving it up in the fear. So it clings to something which it knows. Yeah, which it knows and which is very precious to it. But it, it doesn't know that it's going to breed fear. But even when it knows, it's still... But it'd much it. rather run away from fear, hoping the pleasure will continue. Yeah. But I think eventually it starts to become irrational because, you see, oh, it creates the pressures which make the brain irrational and unable to, uh, unable to get this straight. Yes. Yeah, where are we now at the end of this? I want, we started off so, don't we, yes. Dr. Bohm, that is there an action in which there is no motive, no cause, the self doesn't enter into it at all. Of course there is. There is when the self is not. And this, which means no identifying process takes place. I see a, there is a perceiving of a beautiful, of a lake with all the colour, the glory and the beauty of it, and that's enough. 
not the memory, cult- cultivating memory, which is developed through the identification process. Right? Yeah, but quite you know, always raises the question how are we going to stop this identification? You see, that I don't think there is a how. Right, right. What will we see, do, right? The, the, which means meditation, yeah, control, <laughs> practice, 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 practice. And that, and that way makes the mind mechanical, dull, forgive me, I'm not sure. And literally incapable of receiving anything new. If it imitates, if it just imitates it, imitates it, imitates, this is precisely what happens. What? If, 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 if these practices are done with imitation, imitation, imitation. Imi- imita- yes, yes, imitation. That means if that practice becomes an imitation, then, then it is a terrible mind, conditioning. Then mind is mechanical. What do you mean imitation? If you tell me, if I may make it very simple, uh, just three times a day put your hand on the floor and something and, will and happen. You do it. And I do it. I do not think about it. I do not inquire about it. I do not say, why? Now what happens? Why should I? If I do not question it, if I just mechanically do it, nothing will happen. I'll get only more and more. Uh, Yes, but, but if I inquire into it, why? What for? Why what is my reaction? No, my question is, I have listened to you, somebody who says, put your hand there, huh? and then I begin to inquire. But I, I don't accept anybody telling me I must put my hand there. Then I've no, I, I don't have to inquire. I don't. Do you remember that famous story of a guru? He had a favorite cat, yes. and he had many disciples. So every morning, before they all started meditating, he caught hold of the cat, yes. put it on his lap, and meditated. And when he died, the disciples had to search around for a cat. Yes. Yes. I mean that. <laughs> I have heard differently. The cat was tied to yes, somewhere so that he may not come and disturb us. No, I. You see, our minds are mechanical. Anyhow, have been made mechanical. Can't we investigate why we have become mechanical? rather than practice that which is non-mechanical, which may be mechanical. You? I'm with you, yes. Uh, um, we can, since there have been whole people before us, huh? since there have been uh, people who have become whole before us. I don't know. Uh, or it seems, if I, I stand out I on my about. quest, it I seems have, likely. Have, you see, you accept it. I am looking at it as a possible proposition. I, I don't know. I start with yeah. myself. I don't look to somebody who is enlightened. I don't know. They may, be, they may deceive themselves. This is my disperse while trying to find so out by oneself. So I, I start, and one must start with oneself. Oneself is already second hand, living in the shadow of others. So why look to others? So here I am. I, from there I begin. It's so simple. While well, the other leads to so many complications. I do not necessarily see it as a complication. If I have an idea, there is something that is more than my illusion, my suffering, my general state of dissatisfaction uh, in which I am and which I have to face. If I do not think that there is any possibility, then I might not even try. If I see 
that there might be a possibility. I do not need to take it for true, but it gives me the sense that it is worthwhile trying to work with myself as my own subject of experiment. But to why, work do you want, it out. why do you want a motive? With that, I think it is almost impossible not to start with that motive, because that starts from self. No, Mira, yeah. we, are, we are talking about the same thing, aren't we? Mm. I just want to know myself. Mm. Not because I suffer, I go through, I just want to know what I am. Not according to anybody, but just know by myself. Mm. Mm. So, I begin to inquire, I begin to look in the mirror, which is myself. Mm. In the mirror says, your reactions are these. Mm. And as long as you have these reactions, you're going to pay heavily, you're going to suffer. So that's all. So now, how am I, an ordinary human being, knowing all my reactions, ugly, pleasant, um, hateful, all the reactions one has, bring about an observation in which there is no motive to restrain or to expand reactions. I wonder if I make myself clear. Yes, yes. How am I to observe myself without a cause? Well, the cause generally is punishment and reward, which is obviously too absurd, like a dog being trained. So, is, can I look at myself without any motive? Well, that's great. At this stage of inquiry, huh? at at such a state of inquiry, where I'm beginning to try to do it, I, to start with, I cannot do it. I'm too conditioned. I know, no, I know, I know, I, I wouldn't admit, you see, you're always asking for help. No, but I can, in the same way as I can do a physical training too, I can be able, slowly, so but I not see. immediately, to look to bear the proximity of those things yes, uh, yes. that I do normally not like to see in myself. I understand that, Mayor, which is like I can I have no muscles to do certain exercises. Mm -hmm. In a week's time I have those muscles by doing exercise. That same mentality is carried over. I don't know myself, but I will gradually learn about myself. It's not that I need to gradually, we have to be careful here, it's not that I need to gradually learn about myself, it is only that I have to develop the courage, the strength to bear It is the same myself. thing, it is the same thing. I have the strength, physical strength to do certain exercises. The same mental operation goes psychologically. I'm weak, but I must get strong. It's not that I must get strong. I think this is where one gets oneself into a... Could you say? Yes. Uh, it is not for the motive. It is a very real suffering out and looking and and suffering out and looking and suffering out and looking. And oh, there is no. a changing factor in it, which in the end which makes is it again, possible. Again, gradual, evolution. And I say that's, that's totally, if I may point out, I'm not correcting you, uh, that's, that will lead nowhere, it's an illusion. Uh, it need not lead to anywhere, but if it is continued in that spirit, with that attitude, not I get something out of it, then there is a sudden change possible, and it does occur. Whether we have done it, and I would like to make another point on that, whether we have done it starting with that motive and, and began slowly 
the other way, or whether we have done it unbeknownst to ourselves, so that it suddenly can happen on the basis of the life that we have lived, does really not make But any I, difference. Either you have insight immediately or you don't have. Yes, that is true. But the life ah, that ah, led up that to means it, that preparation, is important. preparation, yes. which means time. Yes. Which means cultivating identification the meaning. No, no. Of course, time won't you allow time, it is the cultivation of the self. Not necessarily, sir. Why do you say not necessarily? If I do it for something that I want to gain out of it. Oh no, no. Then it is certainly a cultivation of the self. Madam, when you say, as, I, as we said just now, insight is devoid of time and memory. It is, insight is timeless, it must happen. Mm. You can't gradually come to it. It's not a thing cultivated by thought. So, to have an insight into oneself instantly, not I could degree. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Yes. No, don't say yes. We are inquiring. Yeah. Well, I would, I, I would say, with my own conviction and experience, I would say yes. What? Say yes to what? It is possible. That means, if you have an insight. That insight wipes away the self, not momentarily, not momentarily. So, would you say action then is without motive? Do you know such action? Not occasionally. But living in everyday life, I don't want to be occasionally fed, but I want to be fed every day. I don't want to be occasionally happy. Huh? I want to be happy, you know, all the rest of it. So, as insight is devoid of time and divorced from memory, Oh. Therefore, is there an action born of insight? You understand? What, what next? Yes, if you uh, if you had the insight. If you have insight, I shouldn't say had, because had means memory again, no. past. Well, have insight. Yes, have insight. If you have insight, there is no exception. All your actions are without motive. But that sight. Again, forgive me. Are we here talking theoretically or actually? Actually. That means action. Is correct, accurate, right through life. Yes, for no, no, so uh, you, you may make mistakes uh, but, uh, technically. No, I'm not talking of technically. But there is no self. There is no motive. If you have the insight, every action. I, have you got that insight? I'm not you, sir. I'm just yes. Has one insight? that insight into the whole nature of the Self. Not arguments, not inductions, not deductions, not conclusions, but have an insight into the nature of the Self. And therefore, the Self, if there is insight into the Self, then action It will inevitably follow from that insight. 
and it is not, may I make one point uh, clear that uh, I feel strongly about it, it is not that I have the insight that oh. is not possible, there is that insight. Oh. Uh, is there uh, such insight? There, there is the insight. It is, is it not that? as if I had it. It is not that I have the insight. No, 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 there, there is insight. There is there I, I have no insight. I'm only blind, if I can say. Mm. I mean, I have an insight into that. I'm a little bit mentally deranged. So, what are we talking about? You asked a question, sir. Uh, of course, we have gone very far away from my question. Yeah, I know. That's why <laughs> that's why now, let us forget that question altogether. That was answered. Yes, let's go back to yours. Uh, yes, uh, uh, no, that question is, you have answered, yeah. free will question. Yeah. And uh, then there is another question, all, also on, related. Sir. You see, there is, uh, perhaps you are aware of this theory, many people, that uh, we think in a language. There is a, there is a belief, there is, many people say that. What? You think in a language. Very yes. often they ask me, in which language do you think? Yes. I say, I don't know. But I say, there is no language in thinking. The thought has uh, no language and the thought is immediately interpreted into the nearest language to you. And... Uh, uh, Sir, could you convey your thought to me without the word? That is what I say. When you... Yeah, when you convey the thought, it is interpreted. No, sir. Can you convey your thought to me without the word? That depends on the level of two people. Which means what? Yes. Uh, I don't know whether you accept it or whether you have that experience. Without talking, without words, there is communication. That is, sir, uh, there can only be communication, communion, when you and I are on the same level and with the same intensity at the same time. Right? Yes. Which is what? When you and I are on the same level, and with the same intensity, at the same time, what is that thing? Then words are not necessary. No. Then what is that thing? Uh, you, you can say that is, uh, if you like, it is thought. What? No, no. Sir, when you, we both of us like that, what is the quality of that state? Not the absence of thought, but the quality, the perfume, the, the, fin the thing of it. Wouldn't you call that love? Yes. Ah, no, 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 yes. don't, don't. <laughs> but you ask me or just you are going to answer the question? I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> because I get confused when you put it to me, whether you are expecting me to answer. No, sir. Wouldn't... when two people have this extraordinary quality of this state, Words are not necessary. There is that quality of love which is, mm, exists. Therefore, the words become unnecessary. There is in, instant communication. Mm. Now, for most of us, language mm, drives us. Right? Right, sir? 
language drives us, pushes us, shapes us. Our minds are conditioned by language, which is language, words, drive us, force us. I am, a, I am an Englishman, the language and the contents of that language. Right? And if we use words without the language being directing us, words then have an entirely different meaning. Yes, sir. Huh? The, language, huh? the language doesn't drive you, but you drive the language. Language, that's right. You are not identified. I think that ordinarily we are identified with our language, and therefore it is driving us. But if we are free of identification... No, that's why, sir, that's extraordinary how language has made us. Huh? Yes. I'm a communist. Yes, well then you are. That's an identity. I'm a Catholic. That's it, that's it. And, and you think that uh, language is the major source of identity? One of the patterns, one of them, yeah. And uh, I don't know whether it would be useful, I would like to remind here is a very important Mahayana Buddhist philosophical attitude. And Which is that? Mah- that is, it is said that the world is caught up in language. Namakaya, Padakaya, Jangaya. Yes. These are yes. the words used. These are uh, yes, Sanskrit words said, too. Yes, but In Sanskrit too. Yes, these no. Sanskrit words yes. of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is said, the ordinary man is stuck in words just like an elephant in the mud. And uh, so uh, one must go beyond namaka, nama pada yes, to see the thing. No, but... Because as long as you are, as you say, is driven by language. language. Are you? Are you asking person? Uh, yes. <laughs> Are you? Am I? Dr. Baum, is he driven by language? That I can't say. Um, you answer that. I'm a, <laughs> I can answer for myself. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I'm asking you. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, you answer for yourself. Oh, absolutely. Yes. That's enough. Ah, uh, no. Oh, yes, yes. No, no, yes, that's, I can't. Not, that's yes, not yes, enough. Yes. <laughs> but I think uh, the more skillful or scholarly one becomes in language, I suppose uh, there's a greater possibility of uh, being uh, caught. caught in language. Yes, yes. Certainly. So that was your question, whether thought has words, whether thought or rather is part of words. Hmm? Is, does the word create the thought, or thought create the word? Egg? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Once asked the question, is there a thought without the word? That's what I want to. That's very interesting, sir. We'll go into a little bit. Do you want to go into it, sir? Yes. Is there a thought without the word? That's the question. Yes. I think thought has no word. Thought has no word. Thought is an image. Ah, but that's the no, language. No. Word. So we are using the word in the se- to include the symbol, the image, the picture, the word, yeah, all that. The word can be easily turned into an image, for example, by an artist. To say a description could be turned by an artist to an image, yeah. or vice versa. The image can be described and turned into words. So they have an equivalent content. So would you 
What is the origin of thought? If you had to find out, not what the Buddha said, or if you as a human being had to find out hmm, something, you must find out, otherwise you will be head chopped off. <laughs> it's something tremendously important that you must find out. What will you do? What's the origin of thought? God made the world, and the world was incarnate of what is it? Beginning of Bible, Genesis. I forgot. You, you read it better than all of us. No, no, I am sorry. This is common. You hear it on the. Now, sir, please answer that question. Is there origin? Is there? Is there origin? Must be. Why must? Otherwise, in you, sir, what's the origin? No origin. Huh? No origin. Of course, I mean, there must be a beginning of thought. That is again a fallacy. Huh? It is again a fallacy, wrong way of looking. No, no, no. Try asking everything must have a beginning. No, I'm not asking everything at the beginning. I'm just asking, in order to find out if what is the beginning of thought. How did thought begin? With the dog, hmm? you follow, sir? With the animals, with the everything that's living, they all think in various ways or feel and so on. There must be at the beginning of some that. What is that in human being? If we had no desire at all, we would have no thoughts. If we had no desire at no, all, we would no. have no thoughts. No, it's not a question. No, you are. Are you discussing thought without identification? Or no, sir. I would like to I mean, how did thought begin with, in myself? Was it handed down my father, by my parents, by education, by um, environment, by the past? I want to know well, how, how, what made me think? Go on, sir. What made you think? The, the, the question is this. You, you are putting some cause behind. But I would say nothing made you think. It is in the nature of yourself thinking. And uh, you you know, see, there is no other other cause. Oh, yes, there is. I what is that? I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> Yes. No, I am not the final authority, sir. But I will. Mean, I like to talk it over. If I had no memory, would there be thinking? I ask you again, what is the origin of memory? That's fairly simple to answer. I remember seeing you in Paris. Hmm? Which I don't, but suppose I remember seeing you in Paris. That is recorded, isn't it? Hmm? Right, sir? Uh, that, of course, uh, that is a accepted, uh, generally accepted no, that things I are just, in the brain. No, it is the ordinary fact. No, that I don't. That is, a, that is an old 19th century, 18th, 20th century theory that everything is recorded in the brain somewhere. No, no, sir. Look, I met you this week, right? Yes. You come back a year later. I hope you will. 
Then I said, yes, sir, I recognize you. Right? How does that recognition take place? Very good, you carry on, because this is a question that I wanted to ask you. Yes, I'm... <laughs> exactly, I know that... it down. How I'm does asked... memory rise? Yes, sir. <laughs> I did ask it, but uh, this is the question I wanted very much I'm to I'm doing know. that, sir. I meet you now, and in a year's time you come back. I hope you will. We'll, in we'll have a discussion. Angeles. And yes. I, then I say, yes, sir, Mr. Rahula, we met last year. How does that take place? Very simple. Memory, I read, brain has recorded that memory of meeting you. Learning your name. So that is memory. Which when I meet you next time, I recognize you. Right? There's nothing. So how does it happen? That is the question. Oh, it's, it's very simple. You have been introduced to me. Hmm? We have sat down here for three after, uh, two afternoons and morning, and that is remembered. When you come back next year, I say yes. If I didn't remember, I wouldn't recognize you. Right? So, Recording goes on. It's not 19th or 1st century or 20th century. Recording must go on. The elaborate educating process of learning a technique, hmm? how to drive a car, go to the moon or whatever it is, is careful accumulation of memory, hmm? which then adds. This is a, there's nothing wrong in that, is there? How does it happen? I, sir, I don't know how to drive a car. So I go to the man who teaches me how to drive a car. I take 24 lessons. At the end of it, I'm inspected. And the man says, we're pretty good, and gives me, I've learned it. By driving with him, he's telling me, be careful, Turn to the left, and he's guiding me all the time. So at the end of 24 lessons, I'm a good driver, I hope. Mm? And that's all. There's nothing right or wrong about it. In the same way, I meet you today, next year I'll remember, which is, there is remembrance, which is a recording process. No? It's so simple. Yes, I still give it, it is not completely clear to me. It is, let us admit, it is recorded. How that record comes up when you meet me next year? It does, oh, when I see you, that memory springs up, you say, oh, he is Mr. I, the recording is the image, Pleasurable or not pleasurable? I hope it will be pleasurable. I mean, <laughs> 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 pleasurable or not pleasurable? And that's recorded. And when I meet you next time, I meet you. But if it is not pleasurable, I say, well, what a bore. That also is me. And I turn away and talk about something else. So this whole process is recorded. How I've learned to drive a car, how I learned to speak English, French, German, whatever it is, and must there must be a recording. No? Settled, it is at it is so. There there must must be a recording. But you say nineteenth century. Yes. Uh, what I want to say is it is not in the brain. Oh that is the thing. I, I see. Say. Where it is, is it? It is in the nature of what we call generally the mental faculty, just as I, ear, nose, etc. Mind faculty, mental faculty also is a faculty. Yes. That is, that is one of the 
the potentiality. Yes, well, it's the faculty, has nothing to do with the brain. It's the faculty of the brain to record. Uh, it is not the physical brain. No, that is my point. You see. Ah, you have gone off into something. Uh, yes, uh, that is what I say. You are saying that the mental faculty is just like spread all over the body, not necessarily in the head. Is that when you say? Uh, no. uh, mental faculty is uh, one of the sense organs. There are five physical sense organs. You see, I has the power. To see and to examine, I but ear can't do it. Yeah. Yes, it can hear only. Yeah. And there is the mental faculty, just like I ear, nose, tongue, body, physical faculties. There is the mental faculty which, you see, I ear, nose, tongue, and body deals with the uh, the external world, material world. But the world is not finished by that. Well, the bigger part of the world is not accept, touched by that. What is, the, what is the bigger part of the world? bigger part of the world is the, 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 that is what we were talking, these sensations and all these things. They are not touched by body or anything like that. Hmm? Then me, me, mind faculty, mental faculty is a thing that has many, many aspects, many potentialities. One is this memory. And what I want to clarify is from you, how does it happen? And of course you begin with the idea of brain. No. The recorded in the <coughs> brain. And which I <coughs> dispute. No, I can sir, I don't have, let's cut out the brain for the moment. I meet you today and I see you a week later. Yes. There is a process of recognition. All right. Yes. That's one part of the uh, faculty. Right? Yes. The other part of the faculty is to think logically. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Or not logically. So there are several aspects yes. to mental faculty. You know, faculties which is called which is made up in the in the mind. Yes. Mind you cannot have mind without the brain. Yes, the mind, certainly, because not only by brain, without the body, without the stomach, without the heart. What? <laughs> a whole, whole physical, uh, without the physical existence, you can't have a mind. That's all. Therefore, why only brain? Yes. So, mind is part of the senses. Right? Mind is part of the um, thought. Emotions, certain faculties to think, and so on, so on. Huh? Is that outside or the whole structure of the organism, the whole brain, body, eyes, ears, so all that, is part of this mind which is, which is the process of thinking? No? Are you saying mind is uh, thought, or is it, uh, is it more than thought as well? I don't know, but I know that you. I, I don't want to say that. Just say thought. I only want to say the mind, as long as it is functioning within the field of thought, is limited. Okay. Yeah, so you mean consciousness, the mind is. Yeah, right. consciousness <coughs> is limited. We say it's limited by these faculties, wherever they That's are. That's right, whatever they are. And, uh, <clears throat> but as far as recognition goes, I mean, people are even making machines that can imitate the process of recognition. Of course. And uh, they do, you know, they can recognize simple things already by means of computers. And yet, uh, if I have met you just yeah. for a moment, and there was not a sufficient impact of you 
of that meeting in me. I will next week uh, pass you by and not recognize you. That's the point. It has to be recorded mm. with some energy. You see, that that is what I mean. There must be a sufficient uh, input of energy. All recording must have energy. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm. If you it don't turn on the microphone, nothing is recorded. <laughs> Precisely. Yes. Mm. That is so. Of course. And many things that we see and hear and we don't remember, only things that give certain impression. But you see, I think that there, you know, it's fairly clear how the record could give rise to a recognition in the next experience. You know, the next time you see the person, the, uh, the, the record is compared with... It, it comes back. It comes back, yes. yes. It is exactly like uh, the computer takes it up. So our brains are computers? Uh, I should say no, not the brain. What is Bra the brain? brain may be the basis, to, not only why do you say brain, but the whole body, whole heart, without heart can you think? No, no. And therefore, sir, we said that. <laughs> yes. The brain, the mind, the mind contains the brain, the feelings, the heart, the whole structure. All the nerves. We are using the word mind as consciousness. Uh, I Which is, I cannot have consciousness if the heart, heart doesn't function. Yes, that is why I use the word men, mental faculty instead of saying mind or consciousness or the word with the faculty embracing, involving all that department. What do you mean by the word faculty? What does the word mean, sir? I've forgotten. I don't Some know. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, ability, yes, faculty. Uh, the the uh, uh, ability to do is that yeah. so faculty. Like when you say uh, visual faculty. Yeah. No, yes. sir. Ab ability to do depends on knowledge. If I didn't know how to play piano, <coughs> hmm? that is uh, no, no, no. Uh, excuse me, sir. You are going away from the point. I said the mind faculty, mind has the power, the capacity, the potentiality to do all that. And those are different aspects of the thing. Oh, I see. The I see. faculty is in, as in born. Is. Yes, in born. In, in it itself, it has the power. And you can't ask me why and from where. No, 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 I won't ask that. No. <laughs> I won't accept the mind in, has the inborn faculty. To think. I mean, that yes. No. Inborn, which means it is not genetic, it is not heredity. Well, no, that. No, 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 that, no, that is a no, 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 that is not right. Then what but, is it? Well, right? uh, I mean, say the ma mind, just like our eyes have the power to see. So the mind has the power to do all those tricks, all those things that we are talking. Yes. The memory and yes. reaction the mind and, and the yeah, sensation and all that. Mind is the, is the active energy to do all this. Well, also the physical structure is all over the body. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I the mind, think, I think so, it's a good analogy to say the eye has certain possibilities and in the whole body you have already the yes. infant has the ability to think already built into him because that of, is the, so. of the heredity. What do you, how is this built in coming to be? By being, by growing in the same way that the eye grew. You say the eye has a tremendous... Which means evolution. Evolution, yes. Yeah, Which means, like, wait, 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 yeah. go slow. Which means, right from the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, it has evolved. Yes. Till we are now monkeys, greater monkeys. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Again, sir, I uh, question that. You took for granted Darwin's theory. I don't, from the I, don't, monkey. I don't take Darwin or my... I see this happening in the world. No, no, no. You, when you say we are evolved from the monkey... No. That is, like I don't we, accept... We, we have been evolved, we have been evolved from imperfect man. Or not evolved from perfect man. We are going down the hill instead of up here. Well, or we are going up hill from imperfect man. I wonder if it's work. Uh, we really want to discuss all these things, you know, that there are really details that. Uh, details, yeah. That are not certain. And, uh, yes. You know, <laughs> that is why I object to that uh, uh, 
statement uh, from the monkey evolving. We don't know about it. I don't know, sir. I don't know how we have evolved, but I do know a very simple thing, which is, without recording, hmm, there is no thought. That uh, that means that uh, thought is memory. Of course. Yes. That's right. Thought is memory. Yes. Which is experience, which is knowledge, stored up. Yes. Doesn't matter where my big. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Stored up, and when it is challenged, it operates. Well, we've also said thought is the ability to, to reason logically. Along with the memory, right? Yes, yes. And all that together. Think logically or illogically and so on. Yeah. Uh, all of what you have called faculties. And yes. No, so I use that word because uh, uh, it gives a uh, bigger uh, yeah. field embracing. But it's still, uh, you're, you're saying it still depends on memory. That of course, none of the Bain faculties essence can operate. of it, thought is memory. Without memory, none of the other faculties could Can operate. exist, of course. I see that thing. Hmm? Then I, it has been called a tree. I call it a tree. That's all. It's recorded all the time. Without that <coughs> recording, there is no beginning of thought. There is no thought. So, if you are born in Catholic world and conditioned by Catholic world, you would be thinking along Catholic world, Christ and you know the whole business of it. So you are conditioned by propaganda, by books, by priests, by all the circus that goes on, as you are conditioned in India or Ceylon and so on. So. What is the origin, the beginning of this conditioning? Why does man condition himself? For security? <coughs> to avoid danger? Obviously. I believe <coughs> I believe in Christ. Because I've been brought up in the Christian world. That's my condition. And this life is a miserable life, unhappy life. But I believe in Christ, which gives me a certain sense of comfort, strength, to face this appalling thing, world. So I, it gives me great comfort. That's all. It gives me security in an insecure world. Psychologically, the father is looking after me. That's all. And the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Islam, they're all the same category. So, the instinctual response of a human being is to feel secure, like a child, obviously. No? How does it come about, that sense of uh, uh, security, feeling of security? What is the origin of that? The mother and the child, the baby must have a little security, otherwise uh, how the baby must have security. Physical security. Must have food at the right time and the right hours and all the rest of it. Uh, does the baby have a feeling of security at the same time? Probably. I, I don't think not but being a baby, but I don't remember it. But I'm sure it feels safe. It feels safe. Safe, looked after, quiet, you know. 
a moment described, the mother is there. She changed the diapers to feed her and all the rest of it. What's wrong with that? From that physical security, we turn to psychological security, which Christ gives me. It may be nonsense, unreasonable, I mean, all kinds of things, but I like that. It, I, at least I have comfort in some illusion, but I don't call it illusion. If you call it illusion, I'll, I'll kick you. <laughs> so we go on that way. You have your security in something, I have my security, Narayan has his security in Islam and so on. So each one of us clings to our own particular form of security, whether it's reasonable, sane, rational, that doesn't matter. It seems to me it's similar to the pleasure question, that is, you register the feeling of pleasure and, and try to build it up. You know, but I can't give up. I can't say, well, I let go of Christ. I said, my God, I can't. Yeah, but it's the same with pleasure. You pleasure, of course, pleasure. of course, the same problem. Uh, yeah. I, hmm? I think it is hard on the pleasure because people nowadays uh, do seem uh, to uh, give up or change their religions uh, without uh, too much difficulties. But we are all uh, much more uh, uh, against giving up our pleasure when it really comes oh, down well, to it. That's a good matter altogether. Physical pleasure. All pleasures of the mind. Huh? All pleasures oh, yeah, of the of mind. But where are we going? Where are we going? I will. I. I haven't finished. We haven't discussed the central issue of life. What is action without this enormous complex motives, reactions? regrets, pain, sorrow. Can I live, can a human being live in action without all this dreadful confusion? That's all. And you say, yes, you can live. Hmm? And you tell me, if you are a Christian, believe in God. Believe in Christ. He will save you from all this. And I am so unhappy, I said, for God, help me, and I came to him. And you, you are ex, say, I believe in all the things that the Buddha has said. That to me is good enough. I'll take comfort in that. Buddha Saranam <laughs> Yes. So my action are based on reward and punishment. Right? Right, sir? If I do this, I'll reach nirvana. Hmm? If I don't, I'll go to hell, which the Christian know all the rest of it. So all that I'm one is not one has thrown overboard all that, being fairly intelligent and educated, you say, that's all nonsense. I want to find out if there is an action without, the, without, without any shadow of effort and regret. You understand? Uh, to, it is important to find out, not theoretically or casually, it is a burning question, a passionate thing, I must find out. Because I don't want to enter into the cage, into the rat race. So what shall I do? What is right action under all circumstances, which doesn't depend on circumstances? Circumstances, my wife says, do this. I love you, but you must do this. 
or something else. I do I put away all those influences or pressures, but I want to find out if there is an action which is complete in itself. So I must understand, what, is there an action which is total, which is complete, whole, not partial? Which means, can I observe myself wholly, not in fact, Or through the fragment, instantly see the whole. So is there an action which is whole? I say yes, there is, definitely. Don't you ask me what is that? I wanted to ask. ask I was it. waiting for the reply. Ask it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask what is that. First of all, can you see with your eyes the tree as a whole? Can you see your wife or your husband or your girlfriend or boyfriend as a whole entity? You understand? You understand my question? Can you see anything totally? Or we are always seeing partially? When you use the word totally, what is the meaning? Holy still, whole. Wait, don't go to <coughs> Can I see you as a whole being? You understand? Can I, wait, sir. Can I see? Humanity as myself, which is the whole. That's good enough. The good ex- can I see humanity as myself? Because humanity is like me, suffering, miserable, confused, agony. Terrified, hmm? insecure, sorrow ridden, like, like another. Right? So, in seeing man, humanity, I see myself. Or rather, the other way, by seeing yourself, you see humanity. Which is me! It doesn't matter whether you say, I see myself as humanity, then humanity is me. I am not separate from humanity. I don't say, I am an elite, I am the... I am like the rest of the gang. Not the mafiosa, but the ordinary gang. So, I see the world as myself, which is the whole. That's, that's simple stuff. No, not simple. It is. Would that be right, sir? I was wondering if they could, I know what you said, consider the tree for a moment. Uh, uh, that tree is too petty. I don't want to move. I mean, it's not clear. When you say you see the tree as a whole, the whole thing, to see something holy, sir. Just see it all. 
I think we are in a slight language difficulty because no, we have no yes because we have no other possibilities. Uh, this uh, I see as a whole. Uh, for that really it means that the self or the fallacy of the self has been clearly seen into and has broken down. Because I, otherwise, I, however much <coughs> I see the tree as a whole, yes, it is still is, my, that, my thought. That is the ultimate thing. Yes. <coughs> but can I can you see your husband, your wife, or your girlfriend as a whole being? Totally, you know. You can, can't you? How does it happen when you can see somebody wholly? The tremendous, but not my warmth. What? No, warmth. no, no, warmth. no, no. Warmth, no. warmth comes in. Warmth comes in. If you love that tree. Hmm? You will see it wholly. But we have all said there to be no, careful no, what keep, we mean Madam, with love. Keep it very simple. Don't intellectualize it for the moment. We'll do it later. If I love somebody, love, not possessive, acquisitive, yes. and all the rest of that nonsense. If I love, it is. I, the, the whole thing is there. The totality of that man or woman is there. So can I see myself whole, myself being humanity? I am not different from humanity. I am not an individual. That's all phony. I am the rest of the world. I am the world. Can I see that as a whole? I am not a communist, sir. Because communists say that too, but I'm not that stupid communist. Why do you deny that? Huh? Why do you want to d d deny communism like that? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. I quit. I why? Do, why I, what is wrong if you are a communist? No, no. You misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <coughs> communists are full of theories and ca putting those theories into practice and shaping man according to a theory. Now, I'm, I'm not talking. Leave that for the moment. I'm sorry, bro. To look at myself, I can only see myself as a whole when I am when I am actually the rest of mankind. You mean in, in essence? I mean you mean that uh, essentially I am the same as any other. Uh, yes, yeah, essentially, basically. The basic uh, qualities. That yes, I may have long nose, short yeah. nose, and crooked eyes or blue eyes. That I am not talking. But human, basically, human being. As a human being. Then there is no individual effort, no collective effort. Right? When you see, when one sees oneself as a whole, the parts disappear. But we think by collecting the parts, we make the whole. So, when I see myself as a whole, then the parts disappear. Therefore, the self is not. So when I see that thing, that tree, completely, I can only see it completely if I don't condemn it, if I don't say it's my tree, it's my garden. Mm. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So when I love that tree, mm. I see it as a whole.
Huh? I mean, would you also say that it's similar to uh, all, all, the, all three? You know, like saying that to see myself as a whole, I am the same as all mankind. So all trees, I love. Yeah, is that the of same course, thing? obviously. Yeah. It doesn't depend on that particular. No, no. It's not it, just this tree you love. It isn't that elm that I love. That's right here. It's the right trees here. I love. Yeah. Whether it's in your garden, my garden, or somebody else on the field. So it doesn't matter the particular. That's it. And it doesn't matter which side it is because they are the same. Uh, I love tree and see it whole. I see the tree whole because because I love it. It uh, that does no, not no. matter the one and the other is the same. No, it, they no. Are, I, is, is I, the same. Look, I raise the qu question, seeing whole. Because what is action, which is not fragmented, hmm. not broken up as a businessman, as an artist, as a lecturer, as a, a professor, as a priest, as a uh, action which is total? Don't say, if the self is not, then you'll have it. But I have to say. One is caught in the self. No, or rather, the self is there. You're saying see the self whole, then it will change, right? Huh? You're, you're suggesting see the self whole, yes, sir. and it will not be there. Yeah, that's right. But, yes. Uh, Jeffrey, would you also say that you have to love the self there? That, that's a dangerous statement. Dangerous I was going to make it. Hey, but I stop it, myself in time because that's what some people uh, yeah, yeah, advertising people say: love you, reward yourself, love your yeah. hair. But could you say use the shampoo? Instead, you, you are mankind. Say if, if you love mankind. And no, that's and I'll be careful. I mean, you see, because the analogy is, seems to be limited. Mm. Analogies are limited, yeah. but as there are words in the heavens. Yes. Any more questions, sir? I didn't know it is. We'll stop. If you've got any more questions, one more. Uh, there is no end to these questions, but therefore, uh, let us finish today like that. <laughs> uh, unless uh, uh, the other people, uh, Ms. Narayan or uh, anybody else, but you have answered all my questions. And thank you very much no, sir, for uh, all your very enlightening explanation, and also I must thank Ms. Narayan for arranging and all the all, all the, the people. Yes. Yes. Of course, this is the, the one. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> when I thank you or Narayan no, or anybody, no. everybody. Yeah, I have to thank all the people. Not, yes. uh, you don't thank me, and therefore thank everybody. We all we are all thankful. Yes, that's right. We all no. thank each other. Yes. yes.